A second characteristic of a resonance is its general breadth or width. Some resonances are sharper or narrower than others. In other words, some resonances rise and fall over a rather short frequency range, while others rise and fall across a longer range of frequencies. The general breadth of a resonance is called its bandwidth. A bandwidth is composed of the frequencies, all the frequencies, between the half powers of the resonance. Well, how do you define the actual width of the resonance? I said it was between the half powers. Well, we have to locate the half power point on either side of the central frequency. And the half power in the vibration industry is represented by plus or minus 3 dB, which corresponds to a 70.7% .7 of the amplitude value. A plus or minus 3 dB value in power is equivalent to taking the acceleration amplitude and dividing by the square root of 2, or in other words, multiplying by 0.707, because the acceleration is not a power value. So we cannot do half of the acceleration. We have to do half of the power. Well, half of the power corresponds to 70, roughly, percent of the amplitude. Whatever value we get here, 70-ish percent of the amplitude, that has a particular frequency. And you'll find the same 70% on the other side of the central band, the central frequency, and you'll get a new frequency. Those two frequencies are the frequency endpoints, you may say, of the bandwidth. The difference between those frequencies is the resonance's bandwidth. So if we want to look at it specifically, in the case of the widget's long arm, the bandwidth amplitudes are calculated by taking the amplitude of the central frequency. The amplitude of the central frequency is 17.62 G's and multiplying that by 0 0.707. That answer is 12.46 G's. So if we take our cursor here and we're just to move until we got a value of 12.4 G's. Look over here at channel 2 and when we got a value of about 12, what frequency would that be? There's 1163, 1337, so about 12.45 Hertz. On the other side of the central band, 17.62 times 0.707 is 12. 4, 5, there's 12, 6, 5, that's a 13, 16 hertz. Take the difference between 13, 16 hertz and 12.48 or 12.45 hertz and you're going to get a value of 0.68 or 0.70 hertz. That would be its bandwidth. We see that here. The bandwidth is calculated by the software as 0 0.70 hertz. Another term that is often used in the vibration industry to describe the sharpness of this resonance is called the Q factor or the quality factor. The Q factor describes the damping and the oscillation of the device under test. The Q factor is calculated by taking the resonance's central frequency, in this case 12.85 Hz, and dividing by the bandwidth in this case 0 0.70 Hertz. That would give you a value of approximately 18.4. That's the Q value for this particular resonance. In summary, in this video we have explained that a resonance has a peak value or an amplitude. And that value is very important to a test engineer because it describes how much acceleration 
the device under test is experiencing at that particular frequency. The resonance also might occur over a very narrow band of frequencies. In that case, it would have a high Q value or be described as a narrow bandwidth. Or it might occur over a broader band of frequencies described as a low Q value or a broad bandwidth. How narrow the bandwidth of a resonance is has importance to the test engineer for whether or not a controller can appropriately control through that particular resonance.